they have general questions in which like uh, what all will be taught, taught in the course. This is generally the first question which uh, people have. OK, uh, we'll be starting off with Java. OK, because Java is a backbone. Fine, then we'll learn web driver, frameworks, Maven, SNG, Jenkins, Grid. OK, uh, we'll be recording all the sessions and you will have uh, access to all the recorded sessions. There's the pre-recorded sessions as well, as well as the current sessions, which, which we are doing. That is also getting recorded. You'll get access to that. OK, now uh, what happens is that. Generally, people who. Uh, come to us, they don't have the Java knowledge. OK, or uh, like sometimes they have programming language knowledge, but they don't have Java. Look, Java is the uh, most uh, important thing for learning Selenium. It's the backbone. And generally, the people coming to us are from manual testing background and they are afraid of Java. So don't be afraid. OK, it's not something which you can learn in 10 days, I could say. It's going to take you time. OK, but. Uh, you know. Give yourself time. OK, don't think that in two days I should be learning Java. Mostly people are, are afraid of Java, so don't be afraid. OK. Look, um, in Java, you need to learn core Java. All right, I will be covering core Java concepts. I will be covering lots of core Java concepts, oops and all everything. But, you know, over a period of time, I have realized that um, I wouldn't be covering Java like first I will cover Java, then I will teach you Selenium. No, I am not going to take it that way. OK. Like first of all, I will, for example, I'll teach you how to create objects in Java. Then I will tell you parallelly how do we use in Selenium. Okay, so I'll teach concepts of Java. Okay, like I'll teach you interfaces, and uh, then I'll teach you how interfaces are used in Selenium. Okay. So we will we'll actually go parallelly and you will be able to, uh, you know, uh, relate. And apart from that, I'm going to give you access to a lot of exercises, which will be quizzes, which will help you to fast you know, to actually understand the concepts in a better way. OK, so I understand Java is the road blocker for many people, right? But I think you can do that. All right, it's just that you have to give yourself time. Right now uh, at times. Uh, people have this question. I need help in my current project or I need to clear interview. Okay, how much time it's going to take me. Right, look uh, to learn this tool. It's just going to take you 10 days. If you want to learn Selenium. You can understand and start building basic scripts and you can start learning Selenium and you can complete it in 10 days. But if you want to work on it professionally. OK, if someone gives you 500 test cases. All right, then how will you do it? Right, that's going to take you time, six to eight weeks. Sometimes some people also take 12 weeks. In order to be stand in, in in front of a person like who has say one year of experience in Selenium, it's going to take you some time. OK, people generally expect fast results. It's not going to um, come that way. This tool is not at all tough. OK, honestly, it's not tough, but it is vast. I'll tell you why it is vast. We'll 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 understand that in some time, right? In this course, the total duration would be around 25 to 30 hours. In which 50% of the time we'll give ourselves in learning different things like web driver, Java, test ng, grid, Jenkins, Maven. Okay, look what what are these things? Many of you might not be knowing. 
okay look uh, i'll tell you right i just told you that uh, this tool is very easy but it is vast okay why it is vast is because um if you talk about selenium like everybody is here to learn selenium okay selenium has got the commands which will interact with the browser it's a open source tool okay you don't have to pay anyone to use it okay but selenium will only interact with the browser for example if you want to automate something and click on a link selenium can help you click on the link okay if you want to type in a text field selenium can type in a text field okay so the interactions with the browser selenium can easily do it but selenium cannot help you to write test cases we have to as a tester we have to write multiple test cases selenium will not do that okay then uh, we have to you know when we are writing test cases we have to generate html reports okay selenium will not do that all right and uh, for example we have to implement end to end project okay this is also known as a framework there are different types of frameworks data driven hybrid people also use cucumber okay so uh, selenium cannot this is very different than selenium okay what i basically mean to say is that um, it's it's like it's just not uh, it's it's just like building a car okay uh, you have to have an engine you have to have a braking system and uh, ac systems and your uh, other systems of the car okay and then you assemble everything and the car is made okay the selenium is just like the engine of the car the main thing but apart from learning selenium you have to learn many other things in order to build an end to end project so that's why i told you that this is very very vast okay and it's going to take you little time to learn it but it is not at all tough it is very easy okay right now um 50% of the training time will go in learning these components okay 50% of the training time we'll do a project or framework okay these days cucumber is very famous almost everybody asks me that please cover cucumber so i'll cover that okay and moreover in the you in in if you join the training you will get some pre recorded videos okay in which many other types of frameworks like data driven framework hybrid page object model all of them are covered okay so uh, even cucumber is covered in that all right it's not feasible for me to teach all the types of frameworks because each framework takes nearly more than 10 hours okay and in online training i have restrictions so i'll cover one of them generally cucumber is very famous okay uh if anybody has any questions like you can unmute yourself and ask me or you can also use the chat option in the microsoft teams there is a chat option right any anyone with any questions anything please let me know you can ask me ashish i'm here i have a question yeah uh, so i see in here but at my current workplace they use gradle so how uh, the current company we, sorry uh, in my like current project like uh, i work for a company they use uh, gradle they don't use it, maven it's just it's not a big thing it's just like maven okay that the you will you will come to know okay so okay. no, don't worry about that okay thank you Look, it's a world of open source. 
you might find things online which you might not find in this course because it's an open source tool. People do a lot of things with this thing, okay, but I will be covering most of it which is actually required. Okay. And the only thing which I want to tell you is that if you don't know Java, okay, please uh, don't worry. You will help you learn it. Okay. Also, along with the training, you'll have to do a little bit of extra hard work. Okay. Along with the training, we will uh, give you access to the pre recorded videos which we have. Okay. Uh, maybe on the weekend or when you're free, uh, you can go and watch those pre recorded, uh, watch Java modules from those pre recorded videos. This, if you go and you see over here. So just watch one, two, three, four, five, first five lectures. Okay. These are around seven to eight hours. Okay. They will really help you in understanding what actually Java is. And you know, you don't need to learn complete Java. Then that's the best part of part of core Java. And you are done for Selenium. At least you can get your uh, uh, you get yourself moving ahead. I'm just assuming that you know a little bit of programming. You know what if statements are for loops, while loops, functions, variables. Is there anyone who has who's not even knowing about these things? Just getting a background. Sarat, you just mailed me that you are not aware of Java, but are you aware of statements? Yeah, well, technically, I don't know anything about programming. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I don't that, even know about the statements as well. Okay, that's fine. In that case, uh, you know, you should be going through these six to seven hours of uh, training modules, which I just showed you. Yeah, okay. sure. That's going to help you out. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and we'll give you some exercises and all as well. Now, uh, anybody else? I think somebody was. This is the first yeah, class. Yeah. This is Sudisha. I also don't have any programming background. Uh, yes, I'll be covering Cucumber, Christopher. Uh, Ashish mainly need help with hybrid keyword driven framework. We use that. Yeah, we can help you out. That's not a problem. Look, it's very easy. Okay, the only thing is. You have to do it two, three times. If you want to learn a framework, it's not just uh, you'll be able to learn it in one go. You'll have to learn it in two, three goes. OK, there are different types of frameworks. Now, let me tell you what a framework is. That is the major objective of the training. OK, look, uh, when. <coughs> Sorry. Just talk. when a client comes to you and tells you that okay these are uh, for 400 test cases okay and you need to automate those 400 test cases So there are different expectations from you. Like, for example, uh, you have to write the scripts. Okay, you have to batch run the scripts. You have to generate reports. Okay, you have to manage the data as well. The test data, which the scripts would be fielded. Okay, and you have to, you know, integrate with GitHub where we store the code and Jenkins. You'll come to know what these tools are, and there are many other requirements. Okay, tomorrow the client can also say that I want to do the parallel execution. All right, of the test cases. So, how, how do we implement all these requirements? Okay. Which strategy do we use? Okay, every strategy which we use to implement 
a project is known as a framework. Okay, so like there is a data driven framework. There is a hybrid framework, page object model. Okay, all three of them are basically concepts. It is, this is a concept. Okay, what do you mean by a concept? I'll tell you. Then we have cucumber. Okay, cucumber is more of a tool. Okay, now what is a like I, I said that you can do data driven hybrid. These are concepts. Uh, there, there is no third party uh, tool which you are going to implement, which you'll be using, or third party commands which you'll be using to implement these concepts. Okay. Uh, for example, for example, uh, if if I tell you that uh, you have to make a table, so making a table is a concept. Okay, you know that fine. There will be four legs, and you have to make a top. That's it. Okay, so you somewhere have it in your mind that this is how it's going to be done. All right, but uh, if I ask you to drive a car. Then you have to learn it professionally because car is going to have its own set of foot features, buttons, and different things. So car is like a tool. Okay, so cucumber is like a tool in which there are already inbuilt features which you have to learn in order to implement the project. Okay, so I know this won't be clear to you. 100% right now at this stage, but I'm just telling you that uh, in order to implement the test cases, there are different types of frameworks which you can use. And this is the ultimate objective. When you go for an interview, um, I don't know, like an in interview can, uh, interviewer can ask you on any framework. Okay, but the famous ones in the markets are what? Boomer is very famous. And uh, among these three, you, you cannot say that which is famous, which is not famous, okay? But you have to learn it with time. And even the interviewer, even when I take interview, I know that the person coming in front of me might not be good in every type of framework because each of the framework, it takes time. Okay, right. So you will have to give yourself some time in order to understand these. Now, uh, in, if you are stuck somewhere, you can also take my hand. Right. Uh, anybody with any questions before I move forward? Anything? Right. So as I told you, I'll be taking Java first, and then I will uh, be taking the concepts of Selenium. So over here, sorry. Right, so this, this is the rough course outline which I have made for myself day by day. We'll go to introduction and all everything and concepts of OOPs and then interfaces and we'll see how OOPs and uh, interfaces are used in uh, Selenium. Okay, so we'll go parallelly, then we'll learn about constructors and all and then it expats in Selenium. So it's going to take us nearly 12, 13 days, around 14 days or 13 days to actually cover Selenium, and then we'll actually jump over to the project on the 13th or the 14th day. Okay. Now, um, coming over to Selenium, okay, there are three components in Selenium. Okay. Uh, one is known as uh, Selenium IDE. And one is known as. Selenium web driver. Maybe you know all these things, OK, but there are people in the training 
who are not aware of these things. So I'm just starting it from the very basics. Okay, selenium, great. Look, selenium IDE is primarily a record and run tool. Okay, it gets installed in the browser. Okay, you can record and run the scripts, whatever flows you record, you can run them, but we don't use it. Okay, it's not recommended because um, you cannot just record and run dynamic things. It becomes tough at times. For example, a website like um, bbc.com. Okay, the, the complete website, it changes every day. Okay, every day this complete website changes. Why is it opening? Are you guys able to hear me? Is my internet down? No? We can hear you. I can hear you, Ashish. You're good. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, this is a website. Like, every day it changes. So, it, I, I don't say that it, it is very tough or impossible with Selenium IDE. But uh, it's not also a very professional tool. OK, it, it will not generate any reports and all anything. OK, so that's why we use WebDriver. OK, WebDriver uses a programming language like Java. You can use or you can use Python, C Sharp, OK, JavaScript. All right. And uh, you can write dynamic scripts over here. OK, and then. Uh, we have got Selenium Grid. Okay, Selenium Grid is nothing. You can, uh, like, you can have a central machine. It's basically to run the scripts parallelly. Okay, and to this central machine, uh, you connect other machines, right? And you run the scripts parallelly. It saves time. Okay, plus you can run the scripts on different operating systems as well if you want. All right, now. Talking about Selenium as a tool. OK, it has evolved over a period of time. The current version is four. It is stable as well, and we'll start learning about Selenium WebDriver. OK, but let me just talk a little bit about automation. OK. Look, automation is expensive. I'm just talking to you in terms of uh, money, okay? Because in the end, the client has a budget, okay? Uh, if you have a manual test case, okay, to uh, test that test case manually, maybe you have to fill a form. OK, it will take you five minutes to test it manually. But if you have to make a script for that. It will take you maybe five hours to build a script which can automate that flow. OK, and time is obviously everybody knows the client is built per hour or something. So if you're taking more time to build script, it is going to cost him more. OK. But once the script is made and the script is stable after building, it takes little time for the scripts to also stabilize. Then everybody is like in ease, but. It is recommended to use automation on stable projects. Or it is also my experience. OK, to use it in the functional testing phase. The projects which require unnecessary testing again and again because of little bit of changes. And you also know that you won't find bugs. You should use automation on those type of projects. I have seen that and I've also been part of teams in which you are uh, into agile. OK, you are doing the agile methodology. And in agile, the 
project is being made and people try to build the automation scripts in that phase. It turns out to be expensive in many projects because there are lots of changes in the application, in the UI of the application. If the application is changing, then your scripts are also changing. So it becomes very tough or sometimes we have to even cancel out. OK. But yes, people are using it. If you have the budget, you can use it. Yeah, but it's my experience. You should always use automation on stable projects. OK, I think somebody has typed. Uh, uh, sharing is not visible for me. OK, Shri, I'll just share my screen again. Yeah, I have started sharing my screen again. Thank you. I, I can see it. Thank yeah. you. OK, now uh, I, I told you that it's supposed to be used on stable projects. OK, this is just for your information. Right. And. Um, it's something. Uh, how do I explain you? Uh, OK, I'll tell you this way. Sometimes, you know, and comes with say 5000 manual test cases. And it's happened with me as well in one of the projects. Okay, what happens is. Uh, you your team starts automating those 5000 test cases. OK, and suppose you build a framework and suppose you build a very basic uh, data driven framework okay and you your project gets over and suppose in the end uh, you use the serenium web driver okay to build the project all right and then in the end uh, the client realizes that 5000 test cases they are taking too much time to execute so he tells you that fine uh, implement grid and run the test cases parallelly but then your team realizes that the project was not built in such a way that it could be implemented on Selenium Grid. Then the whole re-engineering has to be done everything. OK. So what, why am I telling you this is because. When you have to automate, when you have to use automation and when you have to build scripts, you have to build them in such a way that you should be able to uh, implement grid. You should be able to connect to Jenkins. What is Jenkins? It's a, it's a continuous integration tool. I'll tell you what this is, uh, what it means. OK, and there are many other factors. Which you have to take care of. OK, for example, out of 5000, you have to just run hundred test cases or only just the smoke tests or only just the sanity tests. So you have optional running. So you have to take care of lot of things while building a project. OK, and generally. These things are not taken care of and later on they cause a lot of trouble. OK, so that's why this training is for and that's where we will be heading. We'll learn how to build a professional framework. OK, now this was all about the concepts and all, and let's start with the actual training. If anybody has any questions, you can ask me right now. OK, now. Uh, yes, the recordings are available, Christopher. After the class, OK, they will be there. During the initial trial classes, we'll be mailing you. Then they'll come in your accounts as well. Okay. Okay, fine. Now, um, the first thing is that you need to install Java on your machine. Okay, you can use uh, anything. Okay. Uh, you can use uh, Java. You can install JDK. Okay, 
you can use JDK 11 or JDK 8, any one of these. Okay, don't use 12 or 13 right now. Okay, I then install download JDK 11. You can go to download page and Yeah, you can go over here and you can download the required version. Windows 64 bit installer, okay, you can download the exe and install Java. Okay, once Java is installed on your machine, you have to download the editor for it. You can download Eclipse. And Eclipse is the basic editor for Java. It is more than enough to write selenium scripts okay many of you must be knowing about these things okay you can download eclipse okay once you download eclipse and install it okay you can search for eclipse and open eclipse okay now at times um, if anyone gets error while opening eclipse please contact me Okay, I'll sort out that error. There can be different reasons, but uh, mostly it will work for you. Okay, in very rare circumstances, you might get an error while launching Eclipse, but only launch Eclipse once you have installed JDK. Okay, when you launch Eclipse, it will give you the workspace path. This is nothing but the path where you will be making all the projects and storing those projects. Okay, so this will be our workspace path and you can launch Eclipse. <clears throat> right, so this is the opening screen. Okay, you can Close this welcome screen. Fine, minimize this. OK, this is the package explorer on the left side. Here we'll be making the projects and all. For example, if you want to be make a basic project, you can go to file new Java project and say day one. OK, and Right, so you will see this basic day one project. If you right click on this, there will be lots of options. Go to the properties option and uh, we'll be using lots of these options shortly in some time. Right, and this is the path where the project is lying. Okay, you can open this path as well and you will be seeing some folders out of which only the source folder is visible on your machine or on Eclipse. OK, and uh, Eclipse is like an editor. It helps you to write Java code very easily, right? This is GRE system library. It is nothing but Java which is installed on your system. OK, now you can make your Java file. I'll make a simple Java class, Java class means a Java file, you can right click on source, go to new class and name it basics. Java, Java basics. Check on this checkbox public static void main. OK, and finish. Hold on. Let me increase the font size of the editor. OK, this is public class Java basics. Okay. It starts with the open bracket. This open bracket, bracket ends over here. This is the main function. Uh, what is a function? What is the main function? It's the starting point of the program. OK, 
what is static, what is void and all, what is public. You will come to know about these things as we proceed with the training. Just accept this line as it is. The meaning of this line will get a little clear to you as we proceed. OK, so main function is almost in every programming language. This is the function where the control comes up when you uh, run the program. OK, inside the main function, you can do your coding. So uh, if, if I just write system dot out dot print ln, this is the command to print something in Java. OK, S Y S O and hit control space bar. OK, you, you will get the complete command. This is the shortcut. OK, and you type over here. Hello everyone. OK, in double quotes and when you run this program, run Java basics from this, there is a small green button. Run Java basics, you run it. And in the output, you will see hello everyone printed. OK, now I am just assuming in this training that uh, you know the basics. At least you know what an integer is. If you are not knowing, then also it is fine. You just have to do a little hard work. You have to watch. Um, it's, 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 it's open video to everyone. Watch this operator loops, arrays, functions, arrays and functions. These just watch them. OK, around 40, 50 minutes. It will be clear to you. OK, now. I equals to 10. It is used to store numbers. String, it is used to store characters. OK, like I'll store learning selenium. OK, you have to end every line with a semicolon. OK. Uh, I'm assuming you know basic loops, that is for loops, if statements, and if you're not knowing, as I told you, you can have a look at these videos. Okay, what I mean to focus on, where I need to go, is I need to tell you about object-oriented programming. Oops. This is something which you should start with. This is something which is important because if you go to the Selenium website, okay, like if, if I go to the official website of Selenium, selenium.dev, I think my net is a little slow today. It's taking time to open internet websites, right? So the first line it is written over here is that Selenium automates browsers. Okay, it's an automation testing tool which is only for browsers. OK, it is not for desktop applications, right? If you go to the downloads section. Under Java, this is the stable version right now, 4.1.2. You will see some API docs. For Java, you will see API docs. Go in the API docs. This is the official document, Java documentation for Selenium. OK, you click on this frames link and this is the documentation with the indexing. You cannot understand this documentation. Without understanding the concept of. Object oriented programming. OK, so oops is the basic thing which you need to start off interfaces, object oriented programming. Right, and uh, it's quite easy as well. It's not a difficult thing. OK, now everything in Selenium is inbuilt. OK, all the commands are inbuilt. You have to combine the concepts of object oriented programming and the commands of Selenium which are inbuilt. There is no rocket science. You don't have to invent anything. OK, everything is inbuilt. OK, I'll tell you. Hold on. Like for example, I have made this class Java basics. Right now in this class, if I print system dot out dot print and new date. Uh, what is this new date? It, it, it might 
confuse many people. Forget about it right now. I have just given one command. Okay. And because of that command, if I run it, the current time, time zone, date, everything is getting printed. So I never had to write the logic to print the date. With just one command, I was able to print the date. So similarly in Selenium, everything is inbuilt. You have got those commands. Okay. If you look at this day one project over here on the hard drive, I, I told you, right? You can right click on it, go to the properties and open it from here, right? If you look at this day one project, then in this day one project, you have the source folder. You will be able to see Java basics file over here as well. You can open it in the notepad. Fine. And in the bin folder, you will see Java basics dot class file. This class file is like an executable file. In Java, we don't have exe files. We have got class files. Every Java file automatically has its class file in the bin folder. OK, if I make a new class, a Java file known as say print name. And inside it, if I write system dot out dot print and I'll just print my name. If I run this, it will print Ashish and there are two Java files now. In the source folder, you will see two Java files. And in the bin folder, you will see two class files. So every Java file is converted to a class file. Okay. Right. And why am I telling you this? This will be clear to you in some time. Right. In a project, when we make a project, there are lots of Java files. OK, and corresponding to these Java files, there are a lot of class files. All right, and then these class files have to be delivered to the client. So what we do is that we put all these because the class files are like the executables. So we can put all these class files in a single file, which is known as a jar file. One jar file, it has got many class files. It's like zipping. If, if, you, talk, if you talk about um, uh, practically, then suppose if there, there were 1000 class files over here, and I had to give those class files to the client, I, I could have simply zipped the folder and given it to the client. So in Java, the zip, instead of zipping, we create a different file. It's known as a jar file and we give it to the client. OK, for example. This is JRE system library, which is Java, which is installed in your system. If I expand this, then it is. Nothing but a combination of lot of jar files. These are all jar files. Each jar file will have lot of classes. You see that these are inbuilt classes. And these inbuilt classes give you inbuilt features of Java. Inbuilt features means like I wrote system.out.print and a new date. So date is one of the inbuilt classes somewhere present in one of these jar files. OK. So I'm explaining you the concept of jar basically. OK, jar is nothing but uh, inbuilt. Uh, you can say it's got inbuilt features which you can use ready made features which you can use. For example, this date feature I just used to print the name. This date is an inbuilt class somewhere in this jar file. And these jar files, they come to you when you install Java. OK, similarly. When you have to work with Selenium. 
If you go to the download section and you see this Java, if you click on this release version 4.1.2, okay, then this version will download. You download the Selenium version. Okay, and it's going to, my net is slow today. Okay, it's going to take time. So once you download it, and I had the other version with me, I'll tell you. Yeah, this was the version which I downloaded earlier. Okay, if you open this, then Selenium has got no exe. Selenium has got lot of jar files. These jar files have got inbuilt features, which the Selenium guys have given. There are jar files over here. Apart from it, there are jar files in the lib folder as well. Okay, you have to import all these jar files in your project in order to make this project Selenium enabled. Okay, right, so that you can write Selenium commands in this project. And the process is very simple. You just need to right click on the project, go to the properties, and you will see Java build path option over here. Okay. And go, you will see different tabs over here. Go to the libraries tab. Click on class path. Okay. And click on add external jars button. You can go to the location where you have downloaded the jars. In my PC. Over there. Select all these jar files. Okay, click on open and then click on class path and also add the jars which are in the lib folder. Don't forget to add the jars which are in the lib folder. You add all the jars and click on apply. So uh, you will see that in the project you will have a reference library section coming up which will have the jar files of Selenium. Okay, by default, you get the jar files which are there in Java. Now you also have the jar files which are there in Selenium. You can start using Selenium commands now. Okay, for example, I'll just give a command. This command will not work on your PC. Okay, if I just run this command, you will see that a blank Firefox browser has opened. So I never had to write the code. This command will not work on your computer. OK, don't try to run this. There are some settings which you need to do. But you see, I never had to write the logic to open a browser. So the browser was opened automatically once I included the Selenium jars in the project. OK. So it's not a rocket science. Everything is inbuilt. You need to understand those inbuilt things. And to understand those inbuilt commands, you have to learn object oriented programming. I'll start with this tomorrow, not right now, because the time is also gone and yeah, I need time at stretch. But in today's class, I made few things clear to you that you cannot run away from Java. You have to give yourself time to learn Java. And Selenium is, you, you just don't need to learn Selenium. There are many things apart from Selenium which you need to learn. And to start with, you have to start with Oops, so that you understand the inbuilt commands which are there in Selenium. Okay. Now, anyone with any questions? Anything? Hey, Ashish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm able to hear echo. OK, now I'm fine. Yeah, so when you imported the jar, um, the Selenium jar files, right? Does that step need to occur for each time when we create a Java project? Yes, for every new Java project you make, uh -huh. you will have to add those jar files in every project. OK, 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 thank okay. you.
Anybody and else? If you don't mind, could you repeat those steps, uh, Ashish, like how you imported that? Yeah, yeah I'll send you the recording record. as well. Yeah, exactly. Right. I wanted the same. Go to the properties. Go to Java build path. One of the options. There are many tabs. Go to the libraries tab, click on class path. And add the jars from. OK. Things might look new to you, but with time you will get used to it. OK, it's all about giving time. Because sometimes people take. 20 days to get familiarized. Sometimes they take 30 days, 40 days. It's OK. Everybody has his or her learning curve, but you should not leave it in between. OK. So. Anybody else with any questions? We could not send an invite yesterday. People did not go get an email. There was some problem in sending emails. But I think today you will be getting an invite through Microsoft Teams email itself. Okay. So yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. I got so, that uh, email. Yeah, yesterday we, we had to send it manually. Okay, the day before yesterday, it somehow never reached people, right? So.